But sometimes I think that something really bad is going to happen to us, just because like we have such a great time. Yeah. Are you still as much in love with music as when you just started playing music, or is is is, is that somewhat somewhat changed? I think, I think more so. Yeah, yeah, more so. I mean, especially when you, you start writing songs and you know what makes a, you know, a good pop song. And you can start listening back to songs and realising how people have written it and how they've done it and why they've done it for certain things. And it, it, yeah, it does make you appreciate songs a lot more, I yeah. think, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Developing all your skills, yeah. be it live or recording, you know, it's just, it's so nice to mm. just be immersed in quite possibly the, the greatest thing I think humans have ever come mm. up with. Mm. Uh, and it does feel like we're getting better yeah, as well. Absolutely. I think, you know, as we play live, we're discovering new things and you, you, writing, yeah, you, recording, yeah, you, songwriting. You, you learn something from a gig you know, every time of what you can yeah. do and what you can't do. And you, you know, you, you just develop from that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, we, and we just love doing it. Yeah. You know, we love playing live, we love travelling, we love, you know, we love recording, love writing. There's not anything about this. No, it's, it's, no. it's great, great oh, business. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite yeah, a small business. So, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> it's really, really hard not sounding smug, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You just try, try At least once you get into the, you know, the record business, you realise what a small kind of... It's not as massive as you think, and it's a really nice business to get into. It's, an inter it's a really interesting business as well, you know? Yeah. If you don't take it too cynically, you know? Yeah, no, it's great. I, you know, it's... It's just, you know, it's, like, sometimes I think that something really bad is going to happen to us. Just because, like, we have such a great time. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I feel maybe that's the, the ten years of... Yeah, yes. rubbish jobs let, let, we did beforehand. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you're, so you're in trouble in ten years. Yeah. 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 Are you very superstitious or uh, good Some, song? No, not really. Sometimes I do. I always wish upon shooting stars. Do you? Always, I always do because I've always had this thing that it goes right. Even though I don't really believe in things like that. I wish. Unless it's an asteroid. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I do. Not really. No. Yeah. No. And so you now win your stars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what was the first thing you said to each other when you heard that uh, this ain't a love song was hitting the top position of the charts? Uh, he said, I told you so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always thought it was going to get to number one. <laughs> he had a campaign to get, because in the UK it came, came out, out at Easter. Easter. We had this big campaign that instead of Christmas, the Christmas number one, we, we were going to go for the Easter, Easter number one. one. And it was all a big joke. Like, we just thought it was a yeah, funny it was. thing. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, like, the Christmas, we, what we say, like, the Christmas market is oversaturated. oversaturated. And uh, we're trying to set up a new market. The Easter. And we, he, he even Easter. did a TV, we did a, a, TV a show, TV. a breakfast TV show. And he had a T-shirt made up going Easter number, no, scout for us the Easter number one. Yeah. And the campaign worked, obviously. <laughs> and when we got to know, yeah, it was... It, yeah, surreal. It was a very surreal it's, it's time. A, yeah, especially you know, if, at home we've listened and watched the charts, you know, since we were since we were kids, and to be up there to get a number one. There's so many artists you know who have done that in the UK. It's a really nice thing. It's a really really crowning right. achievement. You know, it's all downhill from now. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> the number two. Yeah, because this is the, the the first single, but was it also the starting point for for your new album, or was it? Yeah, episode? pretty much like in the UK, it was the, the album came out two weeks later, uh, and yeah, it's. I mean, uh, the writing process of the of, of the album was uh, uh, the the first thing. Was it also for you? Uh, yeah, the, the start of the album when you started working. Pretty. Uh, this only last song was the first song I ever demoed for the album. Uh, it actually w went on to some demos which the record label didn't like. And they heard it and they didn't see it as a potential song for the album, let alone a as single. a single. Mm. Uh, and it was only the more we worked around with it, you know. And it, it goes to show you that the power of production and, and structure and songwriting goes into creating, you know, you can have the, ger you know, the germ of a great song or a great idea, but you still need you know, everything else that goes on on with it, mm -hmm. so you know that wasn't going to be the first single either. This ain't a love song, and I don't. I when you by the time we've demoed a song, like by the time we've written a song, I've probably heard it like a thousand times. By the time we've demoed it, I've probably heard it another thousand times. By the time we've recorded it, I've definitely heard it about five thousand <laughs> times. So by that time, you have no idea. You've lost all all perspective on a song. So. You know, we put together the songs which we, the, you know, from about 40 or 50 demos, we put together the 10 very best songs we had uh, to try and create an album of 10 really great pop songs. And uh, 
but you do lose perspective. And, you know, we didn't think, we actually thought Famous uh, was going to be the first single. It's a more obvious big pop song. And people just kept coming back saying, oh, we, we, this sound love song will be really good. But it was kind of weird, especially in the UK, where we are kind of more of a pop rock, indie pop band, to come back with like a ballad, like this end of love song. I think it surprised a lot. Yeah, it, yeah. Mm. And then for it to get to number one was just amazing. It surprised us. Amazing, yeah. <laughs>